Hi everyone, I'm Don from Langara Makerspace and today we're going to show you how to prepare your file for our Trotec laser in Adobe Illustrator. So first off, go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator. Then we're going to go up to File, New. And on the pop-up you see the width and the height. Um, you want to make this the same size as the material you're going to be using to cut. You can build this up to a maximum of 29 inches by 17 inches. That's the size that the laser will hold, the maximum size. Or in millimeters, that's about 720 by 420. So make it the size of your material up to that size. Down here in Advanced Options, if that isn't open, just click on that. We want to make sure that's RGB color. It will not recognize anything but RGB color. Uh, raster effects, you can leave that at high, 300 if you want. So just go Create. And our file will pop up here. I like to uh, right mouse click on your file area and show rulers. This then pops up your rulers up here. It helps us to lay out our file. Okay, so you can build your file in the final laser layout file, but I recommend building your file in its own file or building your uh, object in its own file and then bringing it in. You can place objects into your layout file, but I don't recommend it because they're usually linked and you can't edit them. So what I recommend doing is just open the file. I'm going to go uh, open up a logo file I have here. There it is. I'm just going to um, drag my mouse with the left button. I'm going to click Control C to copy it, Command C on the Mac, and I'm going to go to Control V to paste it, Command V on the Mac. I'm going to drag it up almost into the top corner. Now you don't want to go right to the corner because I'm actually going to be cutting this line. You don't want to cut right on the edge. First of all, your material may not be quite square, but also it would run the laser right along the metal edge, which you don't want. So always cut a little bit inside of your material. I would say um, five millimeter or one eighth of an inch, around that size. Okay, so to show you how our laser actually works, I'm going to just create a few other objects here. I'm going to create a just a square. I'm going to fill it with black, no stroke. Uh, and then I'm going to do three lines. So this line, I'm going to give it a one point stroke. I'm going to fill it with pure black. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Okay, let's check that. This doesn't seem to be a pure black, okay? So I'm going to change that box to pure black. So RGB is 000. Now you can see that's pure black. Same with this. That needs to be pure black. I'm going to go down here. That is pure black, good. I'm going to change this to pure blue. It's 255, pure blue. And I'm going to change this to pure red. Again, this is RGB, pure red, so 255R, okay? So now we have the colors that our laser recognizes it only recognizes these three colors okay pure black is going to be a shallow or normal engrave pure blue is going to be a deep engrave and pure red is going to be for cutting okay so for engraving Keep in mind that any path you have, the stroke on it, has to be one point or larger. Otherwise, it will not do anything. As far as the fill goes, that's fine. The laser will uh, recognize that. Again, for deep engrave, it has to be one point or above. Now, the differences on the cut, 
it has to be pure red, but it has to be 0 0.001 stroke. And you can see how really thin that is. If it's higher than 0 0.001 stroke, it will not do anything, okay? So one pointer above for any of the engraves and 0 0.001 to cut, okay? Now, how our laser works, imagine the, this cursor head as the laser head. When we're engraving, it's going to go back and forth the thickness of the laser, which is not very thick. So it's going to go back and forth to engrave this. Okay, so that's actually going to take a long time to engrave that. Now, for cutting, it actually follows the path. So imagine this was the path here. The laser would actually go like this all the way around here. So cutting is very fast engraving is very slow okay so keeping all these colors in mind if we look at this this looks like a gray that's an orange if you ran this file right now nothing would happen on our laser so we've got to change this to the correct colors now make sure your file isn't grouped you can see I can uh, click on these objects separately and that way I can change everything. So ungroup it if it is together. And again, if it's a linked file, you're not going to be able to edit this. So it's better to paste it right in from the actual file. So first of all, to cut, I want to cut this box around. So right now it's at three point and it's at some gray. So I'm going to go down to the color. I'm going to change this to pure red. So 255. We see that's pure red now. It's still not going to work though. As you can see, it's three point stroke. So we're going to change that to 0 0.001. And you can see it's very thin. And I have to tell you, uh, when files fail for students, that usually is the number one reason is the stroke is not 0 0.001 or the file is not RGB. So double check that. For this here, I want to shallow engrave these two lines of text. So I'm just going to select them. And I'm going to go down here. You can see that's a gray. I want to change that to 0, 0, 0. That's going to be pure black. Great. That's going to shallow engrave now. And the Langara, I want to change that to deep engrave. I want that a little bit deeper than the others. So you just click on the stroke here or the color. Change that to 0 and 255. That's pure blue. Okay, that's great. So now, this is going to cut, this is going to deep engrave, and this is going to shallow engrave. Okay, so this file is almost ready for outputting. I'm probably going to delete this stuff here. However, there's a few points I need to tell you about here. Um, first of all, the font. If you look uh, at this font, at these fonts here, they're actually... Um, not a font anymore. They've been created into objects. If you export it with a font, let me just make a font here. Um, okay, so this is an actual font here. If you look up here, it's Mirrored Pro. Alright. If I try to edit this, I can't. You can see these are actually objects. That's very important. The problem is when you save this file, on my computer, I've got Mirrored Pro. There's a really good chance on our computer at the laser, we don't have that font. So it's going to look for that font and it's going to want to substitute it, which is going to change your design. So very important. You need to go to uh, Type and Create Outlines. Okay. Now you can see it, it's actual objects. If I click on the uh, font tool, I can't edit this now. That is just an object, okay? You need to do that before you save the file, the final file for Makerspace. And again, this is a good reason why you shouldn't build your actual object in the final layout file. In the final layout file, you want to convert it to an object or outlines, and then you later will not be able to go back and edit it. Okay, so this file is ready to uh, save now and we can just go file save okay 
Just go okay to that warning. Now, there is a slight problem with Makerspace. The PC that runs the laser, it only has version Illustrator 10 on it. If you bring your file or if you upput your file to us and there's a slight problem with it, we can't go in and edit it. So what I'd like to do is do an actual a second layout file and that's just for our laser. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to go Laser Output Final, but I'm going to go V10. So I know that's the version 10 Illustrator. When you go Save now, this pops up. You can see I was using Illustrator 2020. I'm just going to go down to here, Illustrator 10, and I'm going to save this. I'm going to click OK. When this pop up, just say OK. That's going to be the file that we can use for the laser cutter. So you can now put this on a USB if you're coming in to laser cut this, or if you're up. Uh, uploading it to our website for us to output it for you, then you are going to need to zip compress it at this stage. The zip compression uh, instructions are on the same page you found this video. It's in the first box uh, on the page to zip compress. Okay, so just to summarize, color mode RGB, cut paths and lines, pure red, 0 .001 stroke, any normal engrave or shell engrave, the fills and lines need to be pure black and one point stroke or larger. Uh, deep engrave need to be pure blue with one point stroke or larger. All fonts and text need to be converted to curves. Save your files to Illustrator 10 and zip compress the file before uploading if you're getting us to output the file. And that's it. I hope uh, this will help you and we'll see you next time.